At this time, I would like to introduce Jamal Miller to you. Jamal is a former student of John Gray High School. I'm sure a number of the John Gray teachers will know the name Jamal, and we are very excited to have Jamal here because Jamal will share with you his story. He has a very, very interesting story and a very unique perspective that I'm very excited to hear and very excited for you to be a part of. So Jamal, thank you. All right. Greetings, everybody. Wow. What a, what a big room of all these beautiful people. <laughs> Especially, um, you know, people that seen me come along the way. I really appreciate all those people, you know, because it's very important. My first time doing big sweets, so. <laughs> all right. But well, greetings, everyone. Um, my name is Sidney Jamal Miller. Oh, sorry. I'm currently a prep chef at Michael's Genuine Food and Drink in Kamana Bay here in Grand Cayman. Closing soon, but um, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I give thanks for this opportunity, and especially all praises be unto the most I God at this time, you know, because without that, we wouldn't be here, right? So, I come to speak to everybody today about you know, education. And to me, what is the true education and the importance of true education? You know, and um, my experience in the school system here in Cayman. So, we'll go on. You know, my family always told me the importance of education. They've teach me so many things, vital in things which is so important for your life to be productive and Quite frankly, 21st century young people are quite ignorant <laughs> and hard of hearing, so kind of didn't occur to me the importance of it, so I kind of drifted away like, mm, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but then, you know, right before I left high school, it really hit me, you know, importance. And um, it was only in that last year, high school, last chance, when it really occurred to me. Because in the past school, it was hard for me to show interest because I felt like education presented to me at that time was like shallow reasoning. It wasn't direct intellect and soul. It was just physical education. And I felt not attracted to that because I'm a deep person. I like deep reasoning. So I drifted away from that and started looking into more like art and these other things. So some of the teachers understood this and they, they always made a class a lifetime experience. And I really give thanks to those teachers. At home as a youth growing up, I always love being in the kitchen. I always being a picky eater, so I have to make my own thing. <laughs> but one thing for sure, I can't turn down my mother's chili. You know, my, my, grand, my dad is fish, and my grandmother's Eastern style rundown, and these staples, you know, Cayman style beef. I can't turn that down no time. <laughs> um, so these things, Watching them cook these food is what really inspired me and say, yes, food is life. You know, food is what brings people together. You know, makes them remember certain things. So I say, yeah, this is my thing. I'm going to be a chef. And when I was in school, in high school, I started having this vision like top class chef, Ramsey, you know. <laughs> my... <laughs> my own restaurant and all that, you know, so I like, yeah, this is my plan. So, me already being ignorant, I started looking at it in a way, like dedication. So I said, okay, I got these certain classes that I'm not interested in, I just skip them. And I skipped them and went to work at Mise en Place Catering Service, where I start learning my, 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 my what, what the word is now? My trade, yes, my trade. So I start learning that in there, right? But 
even through that in the evenings when work and school is done, I like history and other things. I study the history in the computer, in the books, but when I'm not in the books and in the computer, I around on my walkabout, on brown bad company and all types of trouble, you know, and going through that, you know, studying history and getting in trouble is what really made me realize the importance of this education. Because when I see people that I used to hang around with, you know, they had so much opportunities in life, and when you look, it just went, phew, it's intelligent, you know? So I like, yeah, I need to buckle up, you know? So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, long story short, I got tired of getting in trouble <laughs> and decided to spend my energy and put my effort into studying and building my culinary skills and my history knowledge of the past ancient people and their way of life and what caused them to be so dominant in this world. So while studying the ancient world and its people, I began to see how education and experience along with some type of, um, what to say, celestial interference of some sort <laughs> is what brought forth their great wisdom, right? And um, allowed them to dominate the world, as I said. And um, this wisdom that they had made people intimidated when they see that they didn't have to have swords, they didn't have to have any of that. They just had wisdom, they had a brain, and people were scared of that. So that's like inspired me more like, yeah man, wisdom is the key. So and I saw how they use math and they use science and they use geology, astrology, geometry, all these things. And they didn't teach them as subjects, they taught them as discipline. That all put into one discipline, which is wisdom. That's what they taught their people, that's what they taught their kids. Wisdom, they didn't teach one math or one, they taught everything, you know? And I, and I overstood that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I saw through the example of our ancestors and our past people in this world, that true education and true experience is what gives you true wisdom and is what makes you powerful and allows you to move forward effectively and positively. I began to discipline myself and began my journey of wisdom. I did hospitality studies in my last year of high school and tried my best on the other subjects. I was mostly focused on the hospitality studies though, because I knew it's that class that would start me off on my journey. I gained valuable experience in that class, you know, many internships, and give thanks to Ms. Rankin sitting in the back and Ms. Jordan and many other people in the school pushed me, you know? So, thank you. I graduated from John Gray High School in 2013 with good grades in hospitality and business studies, but not the best in the other subjects, as we know now, right? <laughs> I was lucky and privileged enough, though, to continue working at the Ritz-Carlton after my internship the whole summer and throughout after the summer as well. And, um, before the summer came to an end though, my mother and father granted me an opportunity to apply at the Department of Tourism Apprenticeship Program. And why I was thankful I jumped at that opportunity because I knew that's a bigger step now to push me further where I need to reach. So I, I applied and got the scholarship and um, started studying at UCCI in September of 2013. I went on numerous internships during the program, one at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel again, one at Ortonique, one at Michael's Genuine, where I was 
employed until he resigned on Tuesday. Because <laughs> going on the next page now. So I continued getting the best of every day, you know, like a sponge, soaking up everything, anything that slide past me. Bad or good and take the good out of the bad, same way. And um, yeah. I got my act together in the core subjects like math and English. I was always good at that, but I decided to really up, up my English grades more than I can and push it, see how far I can go. And um, let's see, I was granted a lot of exposure, more than I could have anticipated. A lot of competitions and events, working along chefs like Anthony Bourdain and Eric Rippert and these big chefs, you know? Yeah. And, um, but I must say, without my teacher, Miss Dunbar Baker, and along with the support of the government, the Cayman Islands government, that, that um, really helped me a lot and pushed us, made us continue, and gave us as much support as we can, you know, as we can get, and they just gave it to us, and I, I really appreciate that. And um, I graduated from the program with um, two distinctions and numerous, yes, thank you. Yeah. And that was, that was through my willpower and my determination to reach where I need to reach and where I want to reach. So it's the feel. It's like what Bob Marley says, not copy, do it. It's the feel. <laughs> so you have the feel, you're going to do it. And I did it, you know, and I graduated. I did good. I have now stepped up to being accepted to Le Cordon Bleu School of Culinary Arts. <laughs> uh, And uh, I'll, be, I'll be going to Le Cordon Bleu in Miami in January, and God willing, I'll continue my schooling in Johnson and Wales to achieve my bachelor's. And that's my goal. Yeah. Yeah. So. But my, my main goal in life is to attain my bachelor's, um, travel to wherever my heart tells me, my inner person tells me to go, I'm going to go. And I'm going to gain valuable experience, many teachings that I can use to come back here to my country, to my people, and build a restaurant, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because my, my thing, I want to bring back that, that farm-to-table experience that we used to have, you know, as Caymanians. We don't buy things from the store. We farm that and put it on our table. But we forget that now. So we need to get back to that. And that's my plan, to get back to that immediately. Right? So I need to get my degree first and get experience, and I'll be back soon. Right? <laughs> And um, when I come back, when I come back, my, my plan is to get my business license and um, get my farm going and start small and get a small place going and have a fusion of like the old time Cayman food and the Ital, the Rastafari cuisine. And <laughs> yes, because that is the future. And we, people getting smart now, People are getting smart and say, but wait, I need to live a little longer. So I need to eat something that will make me do that. So they come check me. So I'll do my vegetarian stuff. I'll do my old time Cayman stuff. I'll do my Ital and just a fusion, you know? Yeah. And that's where we're going to reach ultimately. But enough of the, the little jokes now and put them aside. We're going to get serious here now, down to the nitty gritty. All right? I want the young people of Cayman Islands, the people of tomorrow, the people that are going back to school for a new year, 
I want you to see and know that education, and true education at that, along with experience and the willpower, is the way to achieve in the wisdom. And true wisdom brings forth true power and freedom. And I know we all want to be free and to live our lives and the power to stand up for that life. Right? So in order to be free, you must be wise. And to be wise, one must be educated and experienced. Right? And now, before I finish my speech, <laughs> I would like to say to the educators and leaders of my country, the Cayman Islands, as His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia has taught me, and many other people around the globe has taught people, that man, after all, is composed of mind, body, and soul. Therefore, education must aim to provide beyond the physical. It must provide food for the intellect and the soul. Right? The education which ignores man's intrinsic nature and neglects his intellect and reasoning power cannot be considered true education. For only educated people can consider itself as really free and master of its fate. It is only with an educated people that representative and democratic organs of government can exercise their influence for national progress at this time and all other time. So please, I'm asking to feed the Caymanians of tomorrow with true education that they may be as Psalms chapter one verse three says, like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers that they may know where they are going, where they came from, who they are, so that they can know what they should do in this time. Because as Marcus Messiah Gavi said, a people without knowledge of their past history their origin and their culture is like a tree without roots. So we need to have our roots because the tree ain't going to grow if we don't have the roots. So just make sure you got the roots and we're dealing with the roots, right? So thank you, everybody. And have a blessed day. Thank you.